Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope you had a really good lunch. I hope by this time the sleepy notes can kick in and you're still awake and don't want to sleep. Maybe get some soda to wake up. Yeah, like Luke said earlier today, Chris and Kristen showed us the future of the Ember or Beta 8 warp drive. Uh, but it's not that distant future as one might think, but rather the current state of the application. There was so little canary and the in-works things and the, most of the features you can use right now. Like Yahuda said this morning, we climb in mountain together and Ember Data team, now the Data Core team, stand behind this value. We're gonna provide you all the support necessary to make sure that every app can be on board. But first, let's have a few words about me. My name is Kirill Shaplika. I work as a consultant at Galar. I've been doing Ember for a while, but this is my first EmberConf. I've never been in States, first time in New York. Uh, super excited. It's actually my 10th anniversary of doing Ember professionally. So really good to feel uh, and be here. And I recently joined uh, the Data Core team. Let's see what we have today. We prepared cheat sheets and code mods. We have the incremental adoption strategy. We have a mirror packages and double store setup. Types straight from the Ember data and a little bit about Warp Drive Ember, the way of dealing with data. Little disclaimer, there would be a lot of code on the slides today. Some of the examples are written in TypeScript, some of just JavaScript, just to save some space. Uh, hope it will not scare you. Let's go. Cheat sheet the code mods. Just like for the Octane, we prepared a cheat sheets project website that will show you exactly what have changed. It will provide you clear diff and I hope it will answer the common questions. It's not fully merged yet, but it will be available there. The, this is the link to the repository. Kristen worked really hard to make CodeMod a thing. And uh, we now have a CodeMod under Ember Data repository. It's been tested on the audit board. Kristen said like there was no problems. So I feel safe to recommend you to use it. This is a little bit before after how you use it. Uh, the main thing that covered by the code mods is how do you migrate from the uh, old style of using on store methods to the using requests. So incremental adoption. This would be the main way of upgrading most of the application, I hope. Uh, the people who are already on the semi latest versions should be fine. Uh, starting with Ember Data for 12, you already have everything you need. You have the request manager, you have a handlers, builders, everything is available there. Ember Data for 12 actually tested along uh, against the older versions of Ember as well. So even if you at, at Ember 328, you could update to 412 without updating Ember itself and start your incremental adoption journey. So uh, we would need to install some of the packages, Ember Data, Legacy Compat, Ember Data JSON API, Request Utils. Uh, let's say we're gonna convert the Ember Data that already set up to work perfectly with JSON API. Uh, we would need to have the store service in the application. We previously never done it before, but we need to declare uh, the store service. It will inject the request manager, and this will allow us to configure request manager later. Uh, main thing of request manager configuration for the current state of the application is to use legacy network handler. Uh, it will make sure old request works without any difference in the code uh, of the application itself, but at the same time, you can start using new APIs. That's actually all you need to do to make everything work as it used to be. And now let's see how you adapt the new APIs. So 
you can run a code mod or start refactoring the uh, code base yourself. Uh, this is example of find all uh, how you used to do it and how you would do it using the request manager. Pretty simple. You might see the host that we need to pass here to the builders. Um, this is because uh, in the new versions of MData data, we don't have, we would not have uh, adapters in serializer. Previously, we would put it in adapter, but I'll show you how to do it later. Uh, I think every application has a concern against authorization. Some way of authorization, you will have it. And uh, like before, we used to, uh, we used some hooks on the adapter. Here, we just have a simpler handle, handler that will deal with ours for us. Handlers API deal with the requests. So for every request, let's say we want to attach the uh, authorization header. In our case here in the example, we have just a secure token. Uh, I want to point out in the Ember data repository, we now have a guides and there is a detailed section about authorization, how to deal with it uh, in the guides itself. So feel free to take a look later. But let's see how we would use the house handler. Uh, all you need to do is to uh, configure the handlers pipeline. So first and foremost, you will have a legacy network handler and it would take care of all the previous uh, old style requests. And the uh, legacy network handler will do nothing for the uh, new request using the request manager and builders. So there we kick in the pipeline of handlers. Uh, house handler comes first and then fetch. So every request that makes with using new APIs uh, would have authorization header attached. Uh, remember what I told you about the builder's configuration. So uh, to set up defaults for the every builder, you can have uh, you can use the utility from the uh, Ember Data Request Utils. Uh, set build URL config. Uh, we recommend to put it in the application JS code, and uh, you can just set host and namespace there. And uh, that's it, pretty simple, right? So if you're on the semi-latest version of Ember Data, uh, you can start adoption today. <laughs> Another strategy, a little bit more advanced setup uh, that's gonna be useful, uh, especially when schema records lands, is a mirror packages setup or double store. This, is a, this would allow you to have two versions of Ember data installed at the same time. So this strategy could be really helpful, for example, if you migrate in backend APIs or you have a clear separation of concerns on the application, you can uh, start refactoring slice by slice of the application. If you're still going to use models, uh, you will have to use Ember Data for 12. Uh, it might work with lower versions of Ember Data, but uh, we did not test it properly. Uh, we can only guarantee for 12 for now. All you need to do is to install Ember Data Mirror Package, configure the services. So in this example, I just use the default stores from both Ember Data and Ember Data Mirror. Uh, but you can clearly set up the mirror store to use request manager right away and uh, even abandon the legacy network handler. Later in the application code, all you need to do is to change the store injection. So before you would use just store and here would say, okay, in this route, we're gonna use mirror store and uh, that's all you need to do. If you have the legacy network handler, you would not even need to change anything in the application code. Uh, with this strategy, there is an important warning, let's say, uh, because each store would maintain its own cache. So to ease refactoring, it's better to take, like I said, some region of the app, a vertical slice of the application and start towards there. Uh, this would prevent the issues when records in play are scattered across stores. So, um, because you cannot link records between different stores, uh, you might consider how you want to slice your application first. But 
you would you can always load the record to the both stores to preserve relationship links and and uh, basically use the app properly um, to have a better development experience let's say you might start using the context apis uh, there would be another talk by kevin later today uh, to tell you mo more about the context api how you're going to use it all the possibilities that it will unlock uh, but today i'm just going to show you the simple example of using it in the context of double store setup in the ember data so you install the add-on for the context uh, then let's say you create the component that will be a context provider inside of your application you inject the mirror store and the template is just a content provider that set the context of the store key with the value of the mirror store so later if you use it in the application you can see the log list is in the logs context we already swapped the context there uh, but inside of the log list component what we would need to do is to change the service injection from store to use the consume api the creator so now this component will use the context from the provider and uh, the store would be the exactly store that was set I'm going to show you right now a little trick how you can use the single component in multiple places of the application. So let's say we have this stateful button component that can be used everywhere in our app and some of the, some of the parts of the application we already converted to the new store and some is not. Uh, so we, we have a situation where we want to have a record in both stores. Uh, what are we going to do? We inject both stores, v1 store, v2 store. We consume the store from the context. We named it context store. And we have a simple getter like, hey, should we convert version 2 record to version 1 store? And just check in what, what the context is in play right now. And then when we do create event, uh, we create the record from the context store, we save it, and then we check. Do we need to uh, load the record in the other store? If so, we make a request uh, using the v1 store find record. Uh, let's say you have some complex logic on the API that adds some data on the record on the creates the, of when it creates. So uh, to not lose that, it's easier to just issue the network call instead of like pushing the payload to the store right away but you can do that as well it's up to you mirror strategy would have no ember data version requirement once we have schema records later this year, later this year i hope we'll have it and uh, this would be the way to go when you want to convert your application from the Ember data plus models to the warp drive with schema records. Another great uh, thing uh, that is like not kind of actually immigration, you can use it right away even if you don't want to migrate anything yet, but you just want to have a better types in your application, right? So uh, again, uh, pretty well tested on the Ember data for 12, should work for any other version of the Ember data, but uh, might have some type issues. Like Chris and Kristen today showed, uh, these types are miles better than we had from the definite types. So this is how you would use them in your application. First, you need to clean up the old types declarations and then uh, old packages then you would install ember data types and uh, all the related types depending on what you use uh, there is a package for adapters serializer models and store if you use the older versions if you use the new versions you, you can also add the request utils track and request types uh,
and don't forget to update your CS config, right? So you would add, uh, you would use the types from Ember source. You would use the types from Ember data types. Uh, if you have, uh, if you in the mirror strategy, you should also add the types from Ember data mirror. And uh, please remember to have the same version of Ember data types and the Ember data mirror to avoid any issues and uh, make sure that everything works smoothly for you. And that's it. Now you're ready to use all the better types that Chris showed today in the keynote. Uh, if you need a refresher, please take a look. Everything is there. Last but not least, Warp Drive Ember. Uh, it's a great add-on uh, that focuses on the all new features that we bring as a Warp Drive experience for the Ember. Uh, Chris showed off the pagination request uh, and other good stuff. Uh, but I also want to show you something here. Uh, it's, it should be compatible with Ember 4.12. Uh, you can use the components as Chris shown, and then also uh, it, it will make you easier to refactor, let's say, async computed properties uh, in a way that doesn't churn a lot of the code, right? So probably had some code like that already. If you try to upgrade to the latest of Ember data, uh, you should not use like a relationship on the record itself. We use something like, okay, record has many friends in value. And then let's say you have the getter that uh, needs to return the list of the names, right? You might see uh, there is an issue with the code already because uh, has many relationship with async and uh, it can be empty at the time you use this getter and uh, it will just, um, it might be not in the store yet and you will get installed now on the friends and everything just blows, right? But we can avoid this uh, using the new get promise state utility helper. It will return the state of the object with the control flow fields to track the promise state and the result. So here we're using the get promise state on the friends relationship and we just check state. So if it's pending, we can just throw loadings. If we if it's an error, we can return the empty array to not blow, blow up the rendering. And uh, for the result, we, we, we have the result on state. Uh, we can just simply map and uh, be sure that the data is there. Uh, additional incremental step on the moving towards schema records is when you refactor the application code to use requests everywhere, you can start utilizing the request state. It has this similar API. It provides a state control flow. And uh, here you can see, so if you we rely on the computer property to load the data so we kind of rely on the automatic behavior of the ember data where we when we access it has many it will issue the request here we need to issue the request ourselves but if we know that the data is in the store we don't need to do double request it will work fine uh, and the request uh, manager will handle it for us so the the friend names computed is much simpler now you can just go to the one line. Simple, but uh, also powerful example of the component that can help you deal with asynchronous state is the await component. It's also part of the Ember Drive, uh, of Warp Drive Ember, sorry. Uh, you can pass the request as a promise. Uh, you don't need to convert your application to the request API. It will work with the uh, regular uh, promises and it will already provide you the uh, declarative style of component and you can handle everything. So you might not need to reach for any async proxy helpers, uh, Ember concurrency and so on. You can just use the await helper. 
So a few notes. A wait in get promise state should work with the store request that uh, issued by the legacy network handler. Request state and the request component can be used with all new requests that already converted out of the legacy network handler. So they would have cache options, uh, cache properties attached. So uh, it will just notify the request manager how to deal with them and it will make work uh, easier. But you can also use them with uh, promises or, or the request that handled by le uh, legacy network handler. Uh, some features might not work well uh, for instance, refresh would always trigger the network call, is login state and abort might not work. Uh, but you can, you can start adopting it, right? So that's all we have uh, right now as a learning material prepared for you. We learned today how Ember Data evolved we go in universal web work drive, and I hope you're all excited as I am and eager to learn and start using the features on the application. Uh, now you know how to bring them in. Uh, you can either start incremental adoption, you can do double store setup, or just simply consume new types and do nothing else. But it already brings you much more value than it used to be. This should help you migrate and as Ember Data team, we would work more on the learning materials and polish the migration strategies uh, so, you can, so you can adapt it faster and easier. Thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to find me if you have some issues reading the tutorials, guides, or uh, chit chat, also feel free to pin us in the Discord. Anything helps, and uh, we will eager to help you. Awesome. Thank you.